Hey, Pastor Pat Rankin, co-host, friend, all-around great guy, uh, knows all about Valentine's Day and what needs to be done. Mike Wood Sr., how you doing today, Seth? I'm doing great. Sun's shining. And yeah, it's supposed to be warm out today. 60, let me look. I got my thing pulled up here. 60 degrees, that's it. Yeah, that's nice. It's 33 when I got out. Yeah, it was a little, a little spicy this morning, but I think we're headed there. The days are getting longer. Uh, things are rocking and rolling. How about you? How's your world? How's your world, everybody? Please tune in. Tell. Talk about. Share. Share. Happy Valentine's Day to Mandy Garcia, Roxanne Galati, and Dot Morse. Along with Deanna Fletcher, you guys are first on the show. Keith Mullins, how you doing, brother? Happy Valentine's Day to you. Becca Law, happy Valentine's Day. Um, bum, bum, bum. We got a lot to talk about today. I don't know that we'll get it all done. But being the legend you are, you might be able to squeeze everything in. Yeah, dear Heavenly Father, we just like to thank you for allowing us to be here this morning and, uh, Spread your gospel and word. We love you so much. and want to thank you for all you do in our lives, for all the mm -hmm. praise report and for all the goodness and love that you get us to share. In your precious name, we're asking, pray, amen. Amen. Happy Valentine's Day to Donna Spangler, uh, Rebecca Robbins, Gary Harden, Donna Wood, Becca Law, Shelby Johns, Linda Harden, Mandy Garcia, Becca Law, Keith Mullins, Roxanne Galati, Deanna Fletcher, Dot Morris. Amen. And a partridge in a pear tree. And we're rolling right along here this morning, isn't it? We're rocking in a rolling. And thank you for the what you drinking this morning. What you drinking this morning. You can see what I got. See what my, we got here. My buddy Mike Wood Sr. got me a White Castle coffee, uh, which I love. And he also gave me a, a Black Rifle triple shot. 300 milligrams of <laughs> caffeine. Caffeine. Man. I'm gonna put that on ice. I've already, I've already thought through it. I'm gonna fill my glass full. Of, I'm gonna fill this probably this coffee cup full of ice, and I'm pouring it over the top when I'm done. Man, that might be real good. <laughs> I got it all figured out, man. How about you? What you guys doing on Valentine's Day? And do you know what Valentine? Laurel Wyatt's probably doing something with their hubby. Oh. Uh, well, but I wonder what they're doing. They're probably doing something fun. They're fun people. Yeah. Uh, ba -ba 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 we. Oh, let's see. No. Back of Law's drinking coffee. We. Uh, vanilla iced coffee for you. Uh, let's see. Debbie Jeffries is probably there with Bill. Hello to you guys, and hopefully your shoulder's working well, Bill. Uh, Manny Garcia's working all day. Dennis Shrivers, I'm sure, is working all day. Um. Me too. I'm working all day. I'm actually, my schedule is packed all the way to the <whistles> puppy class, mm -hmm. which I think is at seven. So, well, that's a... anyways, good day, full day. Tell us, um, did you give any cards, get any cards, um, or do anything fun? You guys are going to a fun place, so that's cool. Yeah. Uh, from MMA and good morning from MMA in Mexico. That is such a beautiful place out there. Mm -hmm. Dennis has got probably a nice place. I used to love going to Mexico. Shelby John says, I'm going to my kids' class uh, <laughs> parties. And since it's today, our 11th wedding anniversary, we celebrated Saturday night. Yay! Wow. Manny Garcia says, How are puppy classes going? Uh, Keith Mullins says, Snowy day in South Dakota. Uh, South Dakota, wow. uh, Marcy told us. Um, let me let me answer uh, Manny Garcia's question with how a puppy class is going. So puppy classes are going good. So uh, we do puppy classes at a local uh, PetSmart down the street from here, and uh, we got a great teacher, um, and uh, her name's Miss Mary. She's wonderful. She's a Christian. She's a wonderful mm -hmm. lady. Uh, all kinds of puppies in there. I think there's 10 puppies in there. Wow, that's a nice class. Huh? Yeah, very nice. And what I like about it is is you get your dog gets acclimated to being in a store with a bunch of people. 
being in a, a smaller classroom with people and dogs and then walking around and we do different exercises and everything just stuff that you um probably wouldn't do unless you were in a class you know because we're mm-hmm. all we're you know and we get up early with the dogs we let them in we let them out and do this and do that and so they're doing they're doing good uh vicky's dog um stetson mm-hmm. is two classes ahead of my dog jazzy so jazzy's coming along she's uh i think jazzy's a little bit independent yeah but she's she's a cute girl and she's be bopping around, running all over the backyard this morning with the horse. Huh. Uh, the horse really likes her. Vicky's little horse likes Jazzy. <laughs> that's so. nice, isn't it? Yep. Uh, all right, so that's the update on her. So she's doing pretty good. I'd give her, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'll rate it, and then I'll get off of this. Uh, I'm going to give Jazzy a, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm going to give Jazzy at about a 5, 5 and a half. Hmm. So uh, pretty cool. How about movies? Uh, anybody watch any good movies? I'm going to tell you about a movie we watched last night. So I want to say hi to Terry Burek, Roxanne Galati, uh, Mandy Schulte's on the show. Um, and, uh, man, that's cool that Keith Mullins is in uh, South Dakota. Uh, Dennis Shriver says, just to be clear, we play jokes all the time. Uh, let's see. I mailed my wife two cards. She got one yesterday. Uh, she really loved the second one. was a prank card she'll be getting today. Once she opens it, the music will not turn off. Uh, Heather Tabers is on the show this morning. I got, how come, I didn't hear more about scratch and sniff cards. You guys don't remember them? It used to be the hottest thing going. Smell like strawberry, smell like, Coffee or chocolate. Do you remember that scratch? Those were cool. No, I never did. Oh, come on. Somebody uh, help me out. Surely you guys had scratch and sniff stuff. Man, that was the biggest thing in the world. Uh, huh. I don't know. I just thought if you brought it back, if I got a scratch and sniff card, I'd want it to be bacon. I love bacon. Yeah, bacon's good for you. I man. had a bacon lettuce. And t- I told you guys about yeah. that. So what are you doing for Valentine's Day? Me and my wife have been doing a lot of great stuff. So um, let's see. I'm going to write this out. Did you get a card? Or did you send one? Um, We had scratch and sniff. What does he say? Stickers. (laughs) We did. Let's see. The Man from Nowhere, a great movie about faith in Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Debbie. Um, yeah, Bible will travel. Did you get a card? That's me. Tracy uh, Semino is watching. Thank you. Larry Baumgartner is watching from sunny Florida. Um, we had scratch and sniff stickers, but never saw the cards. Rebecca Robbins says, we will be at the Love and Respect class tonight. Yes! So I heard Pastor Aaron's having a Love and Respect class. And then tonight is a dinner or something, maybe? Do you feel do you feel slighted? Nope. No, not really. You guys are gonna go do something fun. This is I sent a couple through St. Jude's. Cool. Thank you, Tracy. Um Hey, I wanted to tell you I got the advice to get my uh and I got it a couple of days ago. Your card at Dollar General. They're they're a lot cheaper. Yeah. Bill got me a card, and we will go to dinner tonight. Man, I'm going to tell you what. If you're going to dinner tonight, you better make sure you got reservations. I think I will be busy. I mean, it's going to be crazy with the nice weather and, yeah. and Valentine's Day. Kelly Stanford says, my youngest bought me flowers. Yeah, so those are kind of readily available everywhere mm-hmm. now. It's not used to. You remember I used to only be able to buy them on the street corner. They're pretty much available everywhere now, which I think is great. Uh, now Laurel remembers like me. What did she say? I remember some of those scratch and sniff cards, but didn't smell so good. I'll be selling Valentine's Day this weekend with my wife in Arizona. Now that's hard to beat. Uh-huh. Arizona. Would you like to be there riding the range? Well, as long as it wasn't too close to the border. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Hey, you know we don't. That's, that's kind of crazy. Down but there. then again, we don't have a border, so yeah. I guess. Yeah. So, uh, a lot to cover on 
uh, Overcomer Hour talking about Valentine's Day. Do you know what Valentine's Day is about? Do you know how it started? Uh, Mandy Garcia said this chocolate one smelled terrible. Um, so send in your prayer requests. That's what we're doing next. Uh, prayer requests, prayer requests. I'm going to go ahead and dive into it. Okay, sounds great. And I have been on the prayer wall. And make sure you update those along with Terry Burek and Aunt Jen. They mm -hmm. help monitor and keep it nice and tidy. So, anyways, let's do a couple. And then you guys add yours in through the show. And we'll pray for them. And we'll have a great show. We'll talk about Valentine's Day. Talk about things going on at Bible Travel. Talk about if there's anything in your life we need to help you with. Uh, through prayer or biblical advice. That's what we're here for. And just really to encourage you and let you know you're an overcomer. Pray for Dan Gettemeyer. Dan, if you're watching the show this morning, brother, uh, love you. Uh, and, 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 and thank you for all you mean to, to have Bible will travel in God's kingdom. Uh, we got a praise that uh, Crystal Waymeyer's mom's doing uh, a lot better. Uh, and Slingshot Van Griff, we're going to pray for you today, my brother. Uh, let's see. Mike Madelone has obviously we're praying for his mother-in-law Donna, his wife Angela, and hopefully his father-in-law Mark is doing well. And Mike, hopefully your mom is doing well as well. Thank you for being on the show. Mm -hmm. Uh, Nicole Gammon, we're lifting you up in prayer. She's recovering from some procedures. Uh, we're praying for Molly. I didn't have her second. Uh, I didn't have her second. I didn't have her last name. So we'll pray, keep her in prayer. Chuck Linder, we're praying for you, brother. Uh, your sister, Junie Reinwald. Uh, Daniel Spears, we're praying for. Donna Shadrowski, uh, we got your prayer request there. And know that you're praying for your son. Uh, also lifting up Christy. Our friends, the Bauer family, uh, Cherie Bowers has a uh, a pastor friend or dad's pastor down there in Texas uh, who is suffering from a stroke. So we're lifting you up, brother. If you're watching the show this morning, we love you, uh, uh, pastor brother. And John Cordick's little granddaughter praying for her. Uh, let's see. Any of you guys got any prayer requests? Do, oh, do, do, do. How about Karen Lonnie? You have your prayer Karen prayer? Lonnie, yeah, she's always on her prayer request. We'll put her back on there. So keep Karen Lining in, in prayer. She's going to be going through a procedure uh, pretty quick here. And uh, recovery for my buddy Bill Jeffries. Uh, pray for Mr. Cope. And pray for... Um, and I want to pray for my daughter, too. Be praying for her. She's looking at some new houses uh, this week, mm. I think. Wow. So that's kind of cool. Keep her in prayer. All right. Roxanne Galati says... Pray for my children and my home situation. All right, Dennis Shriver, praying for my wife gets through the probation transfer to Missouri from Arizona, approved with no roadblocks from Arizona. And uh, I guess that's all. Mike, okay. take it away, man. Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, just thank you. Thank you so much for allowing us to be here this morning. We can't get over enough thank yous to you. As we begin to petition you for healing and grace and love and we ask that you continue to bless us and bless these people out there having any kind of health issues, financial grievances. You know what's on their mind, their heart, and you know what needs to be done. We ask you to continue to guide us and protect us. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. So let's. there's a couple that just came through, so we're going to lift them okay. back up in prayer. So Debbie Jeffrey says, please pray for me. I have an autoimmune issue uh, that the doctors need help with. Terry Burek says, Greg's mom, she may, uh, has been in the hospital since Monday. She's so running tests. She's feeling dizzy. Um, boom, boom, boom. Let me go back. Stay with me, guys. Stay with me. Marcy told us. Amen. Uh, uh, Donna Spangler prays for her son. And Shannon Moody wants to say thank you for being mm -hmm. on the show, along with Mandy Schulte. So, Lord, we just lift up those last couple prayer requests that have come through, and lift them up to you. Uh, Lord, we just uh, pray for your hand to move uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and touch all the lives that are on this show. Uh, so we pray this in thy name. Amen. Amen. Hey, share the show, share the show, share the show. Um, 
So, do you know about Valentine's? Let me just tell you about Valentine's. So, Valentine's Day, if you didn't, uh, if you weren't at uh, one of the church services, was actually was an actual guy, was a Christian who lived in the third century mm-hmm. under the Roman Empire. I make this very short, guys. And uh, his his job, I, I believe the Lord sent him, is to go around and bless people that were living under the Roman rule. Mm-hmm. You know, just heavy-handed tyranny. And uh, what he would do would marry uh, Roman soldiers to their wives because they weren't allowed to marry back then. Mm. Um, and and then he also healed uh, a blind young lady. Uh, who was a Roman jailer's daughter. Wow. And she got healed, and uh, then he got executed shortly thereafter. So he was actually uh, a guy who, and then after she wrote him a letter about thanking him, he wrote her back a letter and said, you're welcome, whatever, and and on it, he signed your Valentine. Hmm. So... There you go. So there's short history That's on that. I, I don't know if that helps you out or anything, but it's kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, and Valentine's Day is kind of cool, I guess. It's it's a good way to, uh, good excuse to um, drive forth the message of love. Yes, it is. I know. So it just, you know, any of these little holidays that are around, I always try to see if I can use it to, to advance the kingdom of God. Um, so... Send uh, your uh, send your friend a message and tell them to get on the show. Share the show. We're talking about love, and everybody needs it. It's the, one of the only things that's going to last forever. Amen. What Amen. Do you think? Well, yeah, your love from Jesus Christ. If you have Him as your heart and your Savior, you got it. You got it. You know what? If you don't have it, you need to get it. All right, we're going to look through the bulletin, and then we're going to get into our study today. So, upcoming. Uh, let's see uh ladies are starting an ezra bible study out at moscow that's super cool um that is going to be on the third monday starting in february the 19th spaghetti dinner and karaoke night is going to be here in the westport gym on February the 23rd, and I know they're doing bingo, up, uh, rock and roll bingo coming up here. Grief share class is at North. It's starting at the end of the month. Guys, there's a lot of stuff going on. You need to get involved. You need to stay involved. You need to get involved in these Bible studies and all this cool stuff. Uh, that's, that's it. That's Shell Johns' deal. All right. Don't forget to get your tickets for the spaghetti dinner. Uh, Caitlin Scrim is on the show. Thank you, Caitlin, for being on the show and your family. Um, let's see. Youth Breakfast Bar and Fundraiser. Youth uh, Troy Movie House. The mm. Beauty Shop. My wife and Carol Jones and Becca Law, I think, or uh, Jeannie, are starting a new... Um, spin-off of the men's garage and this will be for the women uh and like i said bingo night's coming up at march the 15th in moscow youth trip uh the garage for the guys is coming up in march and okay we're gonna move on uh so there's some of the events that are that are coming up and now we're gonna move on to do you know uh that it's the season of Lent. Yes. Not that we as Christians celebrate, all of us don't celebrate Lent. And it's it's really kind of a Catholic lead up to Easter. Mm-hmm. But I guess it's a good excuse to, to gather people together and talk about uh, what Jesus did during them 40 days. Uh, I think today the Catholics have Ash Wednesday. Yep. yep. Ash Wednesday. So uh, anyways, back to... The 40, uh, Jesus went out into the desert after he launched his public ministry. John the Baptist baptized him, went straight out into the desert for 40 days. Uh, have you ever done a fast? Yes. You have. How'd you do with it? Pretty good? Uh, okay. Did okay? Yeah, you know, yes, exactly. There you go. How about you guys? you ever do a fast? Did you do one as long as Jesus did out in the desert? I don't know, man. 40 days. No, I got to that's a well, long, you know, that's a long time. Yes, it is. So, anyways, uh, 
that's what it uh, signifies length is I think it's an old English term that means lengthen and it's talking about the, the coming of Jesus uh, going to the cross and uh, you know his, his resurrection and the power and everything mm-hmm. that we gain uh, from it um, okay Mary Ann P wants prayers for her daughter let's do that uh, yeah, she had that wreck last week wasn't it I, uh, let's pray. I'm not sure what happened, but Lord, we just lift up Marianne's uh, daughter to you and uh, just pray for healing, uh, physical, if it's needed, and spiritual. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Rise Up with Jesus is an Easter event for the kiddos. Save the date. Uh, March. Yes, March 30th. I seen that on my desk yesterday. So be blessed here, guys. Um, oh, new members class, I think, mm-hmm. is this week. This weekend. Oh, wow, yeah. Great. So I was on a, on a conference call with uh, uh, our pastors last night, and we were talking about the new members class. I think Pastor Mark said they got 10 people in that class. Really? Can you imagine that? How many years have people been joining this church? Well, Janie originally did that for a long while. Yeah. Uh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Um, so praise God. And then I think there's baptisms coming up and all. I mean, it's crazy. So crazy good. Mm-hmm. I mean, so don't forget about the new members class. This, uh, this weekend. It's going to be at Westport. Yeah, and I right. guess after 10, call the office and, and Pastor Mark, uh, and you'll get that information. I'm pretty sure Pastor Mark's doing it after church. I'm sure it would be. Yeah, after 10 o'clock. So, anyways, there you go. If you want to be a member of Have Bible Will Travel, you can be at that class. If you're a born again believer, be there. You want to join Have Bible Will Travel? It's a pretty good church, isn't it? Yeah, great church, I think. Yeah. What do you think? I like it. I'm thinking about joining this place. Good, good, good thing. All right, First Corinthians chapter thirteen. Is that where you already is, or where is you? Are you and John? I'm in either one, man. Well, looks like you want. Looks like you're in John. Are you and John or Luke? Got, or what is it? Uh, or both of them, buddy. All right. What's so let, since uh, Mike's already there, let's go to John. Will you start in John thirteen three and start reading? And All don't right. be offended if I stop you along the way. I won't be. Okay, Jay, Jason. Uh, this. Uh, Jason, thank you, brother. It's our brother from Iowa. He's coming in this week. Oh, Jason Hug is coming in from Iowa, and he is joining our church this weekend. Wow, great. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Jason. Amen. All right, go ahead. I'm sorry. All right. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand, and that he would come from God and went to God, he rose from supper and laid aside his garment and took a towel and grit itself, meaning he wrapped himself, his hands in the towel. Like mm-hmm. that. After that, he poured water in a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel with the, where, wherewith he was grit. Refers to the incarnation. So, you didn't stop me on them. Keep, keep going. Well, I'm going to stop you here in a minute. Okay. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter said unto him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What do I do you know not now, but you shall know hereafter. Peter said unto him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him. All right, him, I'm going to stop you there. All okay. right. All right, you guys chime in if you want. So here we go, and I, I kind of explained this while we were, I was preaching on this this weekend, and, and we're getting ready to come to the big, ending here and you know we're going to have to leapfrog a bunch of scriptures to get there into into the, the into the the 30th verses uh, Jesus is is humbling himself setting an example for his disciples to follow yeah so they're there celebrating passover uh-huh mm-hmm. So I was, I was reading about Passover, and if you don't know or about Passover supper and all that kind of stuff, it, it, I'm going to give you just the basics here. What they're celebrating is 
is is the angel of death passing over uh, their door and 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 uh, while they were enslaved back in Egypt. All right, so that's that's kind of a sidebar. So they're here celebrating that. Um, Jesus stands up from the table. So I'm gonna wash your feet. Uh, it was a lowly servant's job, and they all knew that Jesus was the guy. Yeah. And 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 I'm I'm going to I'm going to ask you this and I think I already know the answer. Do you think that his disciples right then knew exactly the full deity of Christ? Uh No. I don't either. I I no. don't either. Hi Karen Lining, thank but, you for being on the show. Um I, I and it's weird. Stay with me guys. I'm trying I'm I'm studying with you. We're studying together. Mm -hmm. Jesus is there and we still we still don't understand the power that he has and these people have walked with him right and he's now he's washing their feet and they got you know and I don't think it you know everybody that's 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 living in the new covenant now on the on the church age this this side in 2024 go I can't believe the disciples didn't know Dude, it was Jesus and his deity and his power and what he did. And la, 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 la. And, well, it ain't much different in 2024. People mm. still don't know Jesus. People grace our doors and have Bible will travel and may leave and not really know the full deity of Jesus until right. you accept the free gift of salvation and they're enlightened through the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That's a long answer. You want to comment? Well, I believe we can all learn more. Oh Lord! And, <laughs> oh yeah. You think? Oh yeah. I'm far from. I'm far from. I'm <laughs> far from you learned. Ain't, you ain't reached the capacity yet, right? I'm, I'm far from Isaiah. I'll just say that. Yeah. So I think uh, the disciples, so, you know, being with Jesus every day, would pick something up. Mm -hmm. You know, and it had to be good stuff, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Uh I don't know what's your thoughts on it, man. Guys, what are you thinking about Jesus washing the feet? And did everybody know who he is? And why didn't they? And do you feel like reaching through the Bible and go, wake up, guys. He's right there with you. Mm -hmm. He's killing fig trees. And well, he's you know, he humbled cast himself. Up. I mean, you'd have to humble yourself to wash someone's feet. I think. Mm -hmm. I you mean, would. Really? Yeah. So and, he's uh, doing that. Oh, I got a comment on this. Okay. We got, hey guys, wait, get your, get your friends on here. Get your friends on here. They're going to like this. I want to talk about the washing of the feet uh, during the Super Bowl. I, I got to talk about this. Get your friends on here and go, Pastor Pat's going to give the answer that everybody's looking, you know, is wanting to know. I had people calling me after the Super Bowl and all kinds of stuff. What'd you think about that? You know, oh, you were, Pastor, you were preaching on that and hashtag, you know, Wash the people's feet and, and the whole deal. Um, what'd, you, what'd you guys think while you were watching the Super Bowl of, uh, and I, I didn't, uh, it was Jesus, um, Jesus doesn't hate? Is that what it was? Or Jesus gets us or whatever, I don't know. Some people were really thrown off. Some Christians were really thrown off because there was, they thought there was some other subliminal messages inside of, of this. Okay, so I I I think you could you could spin something that is good. Uh, here go Debbie Jeffers says I don't think they understood who who he was at the time. They didn't even think he actually had risen. Uh, they had seen it before. They did. Um, yeah, Amen. There's a lot of it gets good content there, Debbie. Back to this commercial, I loved it because my prayer and your guys' prayer at Have Bible was we we would get the leaders, the, would get these my, these Christian leaders during the Super Bowl, would get the microphone, the commercials would would honor God, and then here you go with these two Jesus commercials, uh, and and it was on on washing each other's feet, being humble. So I preached mm -hmm. on that. So what's my take on that? And, and some other people said there were some subliminal messages in there. The Apostle Paul basically says, I would rather that Christ be preached uh, for ill-gotten gain than not be preached at all. So, now be careful how you, you 
you don't want to mislead people. And I, I don't know that the commercial misled anybody, but I was glad uh, that Christ's name was used mm -hmm. and, and they understood the biblical implications of washing feet. And I think Christ was glorified through it. Let's see what Brandon Jordan says. He can probably enlighten us. He said he told Judas to do what he needs to do. Yeah, so we're going to get to that here in a second. So praise God. Junior Evans is on the show. Christina Schumacher is on. Good morning to you, uh, brother Junior Evans. Brandon Jordan said uh, to do what he needed to do, and the disciples didn't understand it. Yes, mm -hmm. um, he was going to betray him, and then we find out when we get to the end of this the story here. Judas had to leave quickly, and I talked Amen, about that. Yeah. So I'm I'm fast forward. I don't mean to give the, the Bible study away, guys, but we got to stay here now. Uh, Mandy Garcia says the introduction of Christ is better than nothing at all, and Amen. I agree with that. And I don't want to sound like I'm watering Christ down at all. I, I'm I, I feel like I, I I carry the banner with the rest of my brothers and sisters that really passionately love Jesus, and I do. So the the commercials out there, you can just sense. That something different, there was something very different about the Super Bowl. God put two Christian young men to be at the quarterback. You know, the, the one young man, Patrick Mahomes, and the other guy, Brock Purdy, and mm -hmm. they kind of lead the family and lead the charge. Uh, and, and Mandy says it right. It's up to us to discern. You know, was there a message in there? And uh, um, I, I don't know if there was a subliminal message in there or not. I didn't really pay that much attention to it. Well, I, don't, I don't get involved. Watch this. I don't get involved in who's brown or who's black or who's white or any. I, I don't. That none of that crosses my mind anymore after I've been uh, saved. You know, over twenty four something years. So I, I look at people as God's people, and we all need Jesus. That's mm -hmm. that's where I put everybody. Right, and I think exactly. I do, and I think that's what Jesus does. Here, so all these people are not all from the same neighborhood. They're from all different small countries, if you will, and they're all together. We find out here, um, you know, on the day of Pentecost, anyways. But well, um, just the mention of Jesus' name in that commercial, and mm -hmm. uh, seen all over the world of Super Bowl is this talking about how large it is and the yeah. number of viewers. Yeah. And I think it, and I, I think like you guys think that I think they brought everything back to the center here and just go here. We're going to play football. Uh, there's going to be a lot of commercials on, and that's fine. Um, and and I think even I didn't watch any of the halftime entertainment really too much. I seen Usher because I was kind of going back and forth in and out of the kitchen here at church. Um, and and I don't know if Usher's a Christian. That he, I think he claims to be, but that's another story. Um, they and, and I thought all the commercials were based mm -hmm. back around. Uh, the working men and women who who really are the ones that haul the water in America. Yeah, I think, and none of this way out here, crazy stuff like we all live on Fantasy Island or all yeah. these little uh, think tanks that that are trying to break down the American family. Um, that's that's gone. That di that dog didn't hunt. <laughs> I mean, it didn't. I mean, after I mean, you've seen what happened. People yeah. quit watching it. You got yeah. these people who won't stand for the flag, and then you had people that are trying to make guys girls and everything, you know, and I'm not an advocate of beer or alcohol by any stretch of magic. As a matter of fact, I'm anti-beer, anti-alcohol, anti-drugs, totally. But even, even the common beer drinker wasn't drinking the beer because it was misrepresented mm -hmm. on who their audience was, right? So anyways, uh, praise God that the, oh, the, Christians, that. the Christians in America rose up. Uh, God bless you guys. Uh, Usher did say only God can answer prayers. Amen. So I, I'm, I'm not a, I don't even know if I know any Usher songs, but I, I like him. He seems to be a good entertainer. It seems to be a good young man. Uh, so I think they had some good stuff there, man. Mm -hmm. So uh, along with the Josh Purdy and the, and the Patrick Mahomes and everything, man, what a, what mm -hmm. a, what a great deal. Uh, yes, in the it commercials. is. Yeah. Uh, let's see. You know, there were a lot of folks praying that the day weather. Uh, all right, let's go. Manny Garcia says so many people have been ashamed to speak out about Jesus or give him praise he deserves. This could open the door. I believe it did open the door, Mandy. I totally do. Uh, Don Shadrosky says uh, maybe we're getting somewhere. So nice to see celebrities expressing their love. And I'm with you, Donna. Yeah. I totally 
And, and, you know, I, I have to make that call guys, you know, like I, we hadn't had a Super Bowl party in 10 years or something like that, just because I thought it was so far out there. Mm -hmm. How can you possibly gather as Christians and, and, and watch something that was so horrible. So we, we put that on pause. I think everybody, you know, boycotted in their own way, just basically by not opening up their wallet. Mm -hmm. And then, and then the NFL finally figured it out, and then the advertisers figured it out. They go, you know what? The the people that pay the tab here are the working man. Mm -hmm. You need to say that the the people that pay the tab in America is the working man. Period. Yep. We're we're the ones that pay the tab in America. We're the ones that that allow football to be there. We're the ones that allow the military. We're the the ones that allow the the politicians to be there. We are the people. That's a republic. Oh, now I'm, I got, I'm on a soapbox now. Can I keep going? I believe you can. Here's the deal. Guys, we're in a republic. We're not in a dictatorship. Mm. If you don't like what they're cramming down your throat, say, you know what? We're not doing this anymore. Mm. We're not doing this anymore. It's kind of like when they did the COVID thing. They shoved all that, excuse my French, junk down your throat. Like you were supposed to obey some tyrannical orders from some government that we mm. never even knew no we're not doing it no i'm not i'm not a you you don't own me right oh i'm getting worked up now <laughs> you don't know you're you're the one that fought for the country mike you and all your heroes bill jeffries and mr cope and pastor and all you guys went out and fought for the country you ain't gonna you ain't taking this crap we're not, we're not dealing with it. This is a republic. It's a government that's designed by the people for the people. Amen. They ain't sitting up somewhere in some ivory tower giving me directions. Mm. You know, you can, you can, uh, whatever, <laughs> man. Uh, all I can say, I don't even know how we got here. You know what? It's just like a snowball. Just keeps rolling, doesn't it? Well, I'm going to tell you what, <laughs> and thank God for the people. Thank God for you guys. Yeah. Thank God for everybody out there. The, the Super Bowl was wonderful, and praise God for you guys at the NFL. And, and, and one of my buddies works for the NFL, and that's really kind of how I got back on the bandwagon. He, you know, he, he just kind of assured me there, there's a lot of great people in the NFL. I said, all right, I'm, I'm going to get on board, and we're going to all a little water farm. Mm -hmm. Amen. But I can tell you one thing, Mike, it's one nation under God. Amen to that. And I love this country and I love God and I'll be doggone if I want to have somebody sitting in a chair way up in never, never land, giving me orders on what I need to do down here with my family. And I'll end the conversation there if I can get an amen from somebody. Yes. Amen. Good amen. Lord Jesus. Help me. Yeah. All right. Let's get back to the text. I'm not charging for that little piece of wonderfulness christine schumacher says that's probably what they don't have the kids say the pledge of allegiance i don't know why anybody wouldn't say pledge of allegiance beyond me I don't know that. uh we're a republic for which it stands i tell you what this is a dang good show right here yeah there's a lot of I'm, comments I'm, a lot of stuff man. going on and and our all right mike you're in let's go in about 13 9 John 13, 9, guys. So we going. know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come. No, let's go back up to John. Oh, My bad. Oh, man. I'm sorry. You know what? I'm reading Corinthians. You know? <laughs> That's okay. We're, Corinthians we're, is where we're going next, but I don't know that we're going to get there. Man, I don't have a head of a guy. <laughs> John 13, 9. I had two. <laughs> Two sets of scriptures for him today, and I don't know the word. I had a 50% chance of getting it right, didn't I? Yeah. Okay, let's go here. Number thir nine. Yeah, John 13, nine. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, He who washes needs not save to wash his feet, and clean every whit. And, and you are clean, but not all. For he knew who should it should say, for he knew who would betray him. Therefore he said, You are not all clean. Stop, 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 stop. Here we go. All right. 
So Peter says, okay, God, not, you know, he, he convinced him. He said, I'm, I'm washing you to, to, to show you what you guys need to do. You need to be humble and serve one another. Bam, there's one lesson. Then Jesus tells Peter, you need to be washed thoroughly mm. by me if you want to be clean. Amen? All, right. All you Christians, you need to be baptized in God's Holy Spirit in order to be clean. Otherwise, you'll offend God and you can't get into heaven. So that's what he's saying here. So Peter goes, he went from, you're not going to wash my feet. Oh, okay, Jesus, wash my feet and my head, you know, or mm. all of me or what, however he says it here. Uh, so start back up in uh, 12, Mike. So after he had washed their feet and had taken his garment and was set down again, he said unto them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me Master and Lord, and you say, Well, for so am I. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. Oh, Lord. For I have given you an example. Can I, can I, can I stop you for a second? Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. You ought to wash each other's feet. Again, let me say this. Does that mean I need to have a foot washing party at church so everybody can see that I'm washing feet? I don't know if you do that. Are you really doing it because you're humble? Or are you doing it to put on a show? I don't know. I've been to churches before where we did that. and uh, Tell it. I, you know, I just, Tell it. I wasn't impressed with it. But okay. I, I, guess so, I didn't know. I just don't. I guess we wasn't impressed with it. Okay. I mean, so, so when when we read that Jesus is washing feet, we're impressed with it because Jesus is doing a humble act. Exactly. All right. Now, if I tell everybody I'm doing a, a foot washing party, yeah, I, I don't know. I for me, I'm it's hard for me to get past it because, um, I, I don't know. It's just kind of an act. Um, not that you, not that it's a bad thing. I think churches ought to do it if they're if the spirit of God has led the leaders of that church to do that. Because the maybe this, watch this, maybe the church is puffed up and they're they're haughty and they're mm. and they're arrogant. We're the best church in the world, and nobody and 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 uh, now if God says, you know what, man, you guys need to you guys need to come off your high horse. Mm -hmm. And you need to do some washing the feet. As a matter of fact, you need to wash some homeless. I, I think that could be received as a humble act, but not just putting on a show. So Jesus wasn't putting on a show. Jesus was teaching a, a class on humbleness. So right. um, I think serving your, your brother and serving people is uh, something we need to do. As a matter of fact, God, God put this on my heart with, with my staff. That's something I'm a, We'll probably start doing here shortly, you know, maybe next week or the week after. We're going to go around. And we're going to start. We're going to start serving our community. I'm going to take mm -hmm. my staff around on on staff day, and and we're going to start serving our firefighters and our police officers and the local establishments here and there, and just serve them. I just want to tell them that we love them and ask if there's anything uh, we could do for them. So let's see what. Uh, Back of law says, I think if a homeless person came in and needed a feet wash, it was done, that would be humble. Yeah. 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 Amen. So you guys get it. And and I'm with you on that, Mike. That's just where I'm at. And it doesn't mean, you know, uh, and, and I will be honest with you. I thought the, the, the commercial that was out there was, was a very good commercial. And I did not look inside inside the content of that. So... Don't send me an email. Go, oh, you've never seen it. They were doing this, that, and the other. I, I don't know. I, I was just looking at the act of washing the feet, mm -hmm. so I didn't look at the, the characters or whatever. So. Well, I think what we're missing, or not missing, but it's uh, cleanliness, not in the way of cleanliness as you wash to keep your washing your right. sin away. Right. Get, right? Right. That's what he's doing, yeah. I mean, right? I mean, yep. he's not washing them because they're filthy. Mm -hmm. Well, there's two things going on here, actually. He's he's washing the feet mm -hmm. because that was something they did back in that culture. Right. And that's what servants did to guests that came to the table. Mm -hmm. And and Jesus said, I'm the lowliest of servants here. I'm going to show you how to wash the feet. So this is an act that would normally be done by a lowly servant. I'm going to take the position of a lowly servant. There the feet are washed. Okay, there that's a humble go. act. That's good. That's a humble act. Now, Peter, I want you to know that I need to wash you to be clean. 
spiritually wash you with the Holy Spirit. So there's two two different things going on there, and uh, I think you got to really just pause and take a look at what's going on there. So, anyways, all right, let, let's pick up a little speed, and I want to go down for time's sake, guys. We're just going to go to it. Sorry, I'm leapfrogging over probably 20 verses. Um. So we got a, we got a napkin there, so we're good. Yeah. Okay, uh, Mike Reed, start in verse. Go to verse thirty-one, Mike. And John. Yeah, John thirteen thirty-one. Then we're going to talk about. Uh, Therefore, when he was gone out, now Jesus said, "Now is the Son of Man." glorified and God is glorified in him. All right, stop for just a second. So this is right after this is right after Judas Iscariot uh, left because Jesus said, "Hey, whatever it is that you're going to do, do quickly." And, and and the reason I believe Judas Iscariot left is because darkness can't be in the presence of that much light. Mhm. So he boogied on. <laughs> All right, so Mike picked up the action in verse 31, uh, and then go to 32, Mike. If God he glorified in him, God shall also glorify him in himself, and shall straightway glorify him. The Son of Man was glorified. The cross is much more admirable to that way. Mm-hmm. Okay, keep reading. And, uh, his, ch- his little... Ooh. Little children, yet a little while I'm with you. You shall seek me. As I said unto the Jews, where I go, you cannot come. So now I say to you, a new commandment I give unto you that you love one another. As I have loved you, also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. Wow. We're my people. All right. Let's go back here, and we got we got 10 minutes we can unpack this. Here's where we're going to be. So, guys, we leapfrogged over a pile of stuff. We just You can't get there in, in just this short time. So we're here. Jesus, so Judas Iscariot takes off. Uh, can't be in the presence of holiness. And then this new commandment that Jesus gives us is... is, is um, is under the new covenant where he says, don't just love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor the way I love you. Love you. And if you notice there too, he said the little children. Pardon me? Yeah, little children. Yes. And so, so he's wanting you to get started early in life with your kids. You know, they can understand. They may only pick up <coughs> a little bit, but it's a seed that you're planting on them, right? Yeah. It's never too early. Mike Mike brings up a good point <coughs> to teach these children. Jesus talks about teaching the children over and over in the Gospels. Teach the children, let the children come to me. All that stuff. God's next generation needs to be cared for by you mm-hmm. and by me. Let me say it again. God's next generation needs to be cared for by you and by me. And what I mean that, Mike, the leaders. Leaders of the house. Leaders of the church. Leaders of the community, leaders of our state and our in our in our nation, quit bringing these kids up, uh, going to these library library things where these transgender people are reading your kids' stories. Well, you, the thing there with Jesus gave a great way to look at things. He teach the little children because you know the way things are looking. Yeah, it's going to pass on the right stuff because they keep eliminating things from our history books and trying to reiterate the Bible, right? Mm-hmm. So if you go into a true gospel church and learn the word, you know, you'll be able to tell others about it. And the gospel is something that you can't take out of a man's heart. Mm-hmm. The good news of Jesus. Um, and want to say hi to Gloria Lawrence. Thank you. Uh, for being on the show, and hopefully you're feeling a little better today. Uh, Our thoughts and our prayers continue with you uh, this morning, Gloria. Um, Roxy and Galati says, I tell you, as young 
as the children are in Sunday school, they do listen and remember. Yes, Shelby John says, these kiddos teach me as much as I teach them. And they are. You can learn mm-hmm. lessons from kids. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Tim's, you got to be happy. You ever, most kids are happy, aren't they're they? They're all happy. <laughs> all kids are happy in, in some <laughs> form or fashion. Tim Stables is on the show. Jody George says we can learn a lot by listening to our children and how they interpret all things. All right, let's get back to this. So not just love your neighbors yourself. Uh, but also love your neighbor as I love him. Mm-hmm. Okay, so he loves his neighbor so much he died for him. So you guys, I, you, I, love our neighbors the way Jesus does. And we'll have this thing licked. Amen. Don't worry about where they came from. Don't worry about what their social status is. Don't worry about how much money they got. Mm-hmm. Don't worry about the color of their skin. Don't worry about how long their hair is, how short their hair is, or whatever car they drive. Or it ain't going to matter. If you can look at the people the way Jesus looks at people, if you talk to people the way mm-hmm. Jesus talks to people, if you, uh, you know, if you do things that Jesus does, we'll win the world for Christ. Winning the world for Christ is what God calls the Great Commission. Mm-hmm. We have got to get this world back to where God wants it to be, actually in the garden. And I think a big step was last Sunday mm-hmm. through the Super Bowl. I really do. I think it's great. Guys, we're going to win this battle uh, if we stay close together. Shannon Moody says, amen. Charlene Stoddard says, good morning, fellas. Happy Valentine's Day to you. You as well. Uh, let's see tim staples says good morning man i just woke up i'll see y'all sunday all right and let's see so uh what i want to do is i want to leave you with a little homework here today or and maybe you can just deliver this right now what is it that we can do as a community of believers here at have bible travel help people draw closer to christ And I think a lot of answers would be, um, obviously, pray for them, Mm -hmm. but invite them to church. Mm -hmm. Guys, there's no reason why everybody you come in contact with shouldn't be invited to church. It's, it's, it's It's the only institution in the world that's in the heart changing business. The only institution in the world. And the only one in the world that can change a heart is Jesus Christ himself. Amen. So... That all gets done at the corporate churches. Not to say that it can't happen on the street. Mm-hmm. It can and it does. But in order for them to grow in Christ, they have to be in a community of believers, and that's his local church. Amen to that. And this is his bride. So all of you men out there, take care of your bride. Uh, love your bride. Uh, and know that uh, that's the valentine God has given you. And uh, Jesus' bride is his church. Amen. He loves so much, he died for her. So, all that being said, we have come to the close of our show today. Uh, and we talked about love. And uh, and I titled it, What's Love Got to Do With It? Amen, that's right. So that's not only a great title, but a great song. So I pray that you guys have a blessed week. Mike, take it away. Dear Heavenly Father, just thank you so much. We think, can't thank you enough for all the love and understanding and peace of mind we can get and receive from you. We ask that you continue to bless everyone out there. We ask that those having a problem with drugs, alcohol, financial, spiritual needs, we ask that you uh, give them plentiful, give them comfort and strength, and uh, have them all have a little bit more kindness and love in their life. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen and amen. So Caitlin Scrimmer says we need to act more like Jesus first, and that will encourage others. I agree with that. You need to remember two things, though. Jesus loves you, and I love you. Have a great day in the Lord. Have a great day in the Lord. Happy Valentine's Day. We'll see you this weekend, guys.